Hi dear viewers, my name is Sunmithya Dala and I'm an 8th grader studying in Future Kids School, Hyderabad. Today, I'm here to give an essay narration of the essay I have written as a part of the monthly essay competition of this uh, uh, December and January uh, 2020 to 2021. And the title of my essay is Story of Hendiata Lax and her immortal human cell line. The Paul Shroud of Caduceus or Achilles. Immortality is a term which is dynamic. Its usage on earth by mankind is one which makes it dynamic. This term was very familiar with humans ever since we have evolved or ever since the God has created us in a religious perception. But what exactly is being immortal and why is it differently interpreted throughout our lives? Immortality is defined as everlasting or never-ending. Or to make it better, immortals are non-perishable. The ancients believed in immortality as the highest goal of humans, which they believed they could acquire if they unveiled the philosopher's stone. This was a belief associating. Uh, this was a belief practiced by ones who had faith in Christianity and Judaism. While those have always been associating immortality with soul or prana. Further. The the Vedas described eight mythical characters as immortals, and they were commonly known as Ashtachiranjivas. So these insights clearly signify the application of immortality and how it is interpreted by different sects of people, classified based on religion. As time passed, we turned the thought of God and spirituality to the thought of rationality and have built up a sense of interrogating the logic behind everything as such. A usage of terminology, or in this case, goals and philosophies, had also changed dramatically. Therefore, our connotation of what immortality is had also changed and found wider application. The term immortal, which will be used here in this essay, refers to the exemption of death of biological specimens, which include organisms in a whole, which can be unicellular or multicellular, or can also refer to a single cell or tissue but acquiring it was believed to be a myth, for which the history stood as an example. Yet the efforts to acquire it were on, and this time the so believed impossible feat was being aspired by scientists, the cytologists. Cytology is a study of individual cells of an organism. This field conducts studies in the lowest quantum level of an organism. All of the studies stand on the higher level of cytology, like histology which is the study of tissue of an organ. The recognition of cytology was very minor till 1930s. Thus, it can be said that the significance of its contributions has been forgotten and neither further such path-breaking works was not considered, which is probably the reason behind the underestimation of cytology's role in medical science and society. Yet there were geniuses prevalent in this field who have given the rejuvenation cytology needed desperately or the enlightenment which the mankind needed. The application of cytology is in the regions of vaccine development and infections detection. Primarily carcinomas are commonly known as cancers. De uh, detections of new organisms, microorganisms, especially pathogens. Infection analysis which involves analysis of growth of infected cells the reaction to the treatment, and many more similar applications are found in cytology. But science is a concept or so considered subject where experimental and practical analysis is very critical. But the needs of equipment varies from purpose to purpose. Thus, for cytologists to conduct research, cells are very important. And since cytologists primarily work for the development of vaccinations for diseases or infections and stress on the cause behind any abnormality or say infection in the cellular level, they need human cells. But the availability of sample cells for research might not be possible. In extracting them periodically for research is not possible and is not reliable at, the, at, at times of emergency need. Though the cell banks are there for the same. For this same cause, cytologists in 1920s to 1930s were aspiring to grow long reproducing human cells outside the body consistently. But it was not as easy as it seems. Normal human cells reprodu uh, reproduce in a body under favorable conditions. They stopped reprodu uh, reproducing after about 40 cycles of mitosis 
or reproduction and self destruct themselves in a process known as apoptosis this is a measure taken by cells to avoid errors during replication if such errors are encouraged there is a chance of cell turning cancerous and cancerous and causing carcinoma usually the tumor suppressor genes in the body suppress such cells avoiding cancer but sometimes the system might not work how it is supposed to for a wide range of reasons but once a cell is cancerous it will no may be bound to the laws of limited mitosis to avoid error caused by uncontrollable uh, replication and t cells will replicate irrespective to errors unstoppably so it is very much obvious that the largely preferred choice by cytologists for developing a uh, long reproducing cell line of either normal or malignant and diseased cell line would be carcinoma cells but do you think it is so easy no several cancerous cells could not also adapt to the outer atmospheric conditions so it, it practically puts in front of us that even cancerous cells were not successful in this attempt in the setup it was looking to be very far from possible for the cytologists until the hela cells showed up let's learn the story of hela cells in what makes them so special? origin of the hela cells the story of hela cells starts with an african american woman named hendiata lacks she was a descendant of ancestral african american slaves who were forcefully brought to america she was born in a tobacco farming family on 1st august 1920 in roanoke virginia she was in, uh, initially born as loretta pleasant to john johnny pleasant and eliza pleasant Hindiata Lacks had shown up in the gynecology department of the Johns Hopkins Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland on February 1, 1951. She reported a case of spotting during menstrual periods. After detailed diagnosis and biopsy, a glossy purple lesion. Now, what is a lesion? Uh, so this line explains what a lesion is. A lesion is nothing but a diseased or damaged organ or tissue which uh in this case is a tumor which we are talking about you know we are referring to a lesion which is a tumor so in the di- uh in uh in the diagnosis a glossy purple lesion was being observed on the par- one of the parametria or simply parametrium which are the walls of the cervix a renowned gy- gynecologist of the Johns Hopkins conducted the um, biops uh, examination of Hendiata Lacks named Dr Howard Jones he is the one who conducted biopsy of Hendiata Lacks and harvested a sample of her tumor and a sample of a healthy tissue this harvesting procedure was done without the knowledge of neither her family nor Hendiata herself this practice was in the present world is not acceptable or encouraged in fact some laws and regulations are drafted under this concern these laws and regulations justify and protect the tissue ownership of one but this illegal practice so called illegal practice was not strong a few decades before and was regularly practiced by scient- uh, scient- uh, scientists back then before any tissue ownership laws were brought this was not done purposely but this was done out of despair to develop an immortal human cell line and it can be understood the fact that hela cells were um, harvested from hendiata lacks that the fact that actually hela cells are from hendiata lacks um, was not known by their family till 1970s which is about two decades after the actual uh, uh, hela cells were being extracted and removed uh, a sample of the hela cells were taken from hendiata so till two decades after that they did not know that actually the source of the hela cells which had already brought a medical revolution then was from their actual their family member hendiata lax and it was not even known by the world the cervical carcinoma with which uh, hendiata was diagnosed was rare and malignant It was an epidermoid carcinoma of the squamous cells of cervix uteri, the cervix. This cancer is simply termed as acromatoid squamous cell carcinoma of the cervix. Usually the prognosis 
which is pro prognosis nothing but progress or path of a medical condition so the prognosis of females with sacramentoid squamous cell carcinoma of cervix is critical and very progressive any particularly in the case of hendiatal axis was even more malignant and progressive making her more vulnerable to the cancer and closer to death the prognosis of her medical condition worsened day by day and additionally her body was showing no results to the treatment given we have hela cells to blame for it these cells in hendiata are the cause behind the growing prognosis of the carcinoma in her the hela cells are the cause behind no reaction of treatment since they have uh, the adaptability to almost all environments making them inevitable to any treatment the accurate cause behind the origin of these uh, cells and their potent is still unknown but the common hypothesis states that human papilloma virus which is a common cause of most cervical cancer cases might have affected or have caused mutation or thereby the loss of heterozygosity loss of heterozygosity is nothing but the cross chromosomal event where genetics of a cell undergoes drastic metamorphosis so they 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 suspect that this human papilloma virus which was per, which had particularly affected hindia telax might have caused a mutation thereby the loss of heterozygosity in the normal cells of the stroma of the cervix of hindia telax and might have caused the origin of hela cells the phenomenon of loss of heterozygosity is known as chromatrypsis but this is still a hypothesis and it is, there is no evidence yet found out to verify this hypothesis and concluded that yeah this is the actual reason behind the origin of hela cells next the hindi hindiatus prognosis and autopsy so if we want to understand about hela cells and what they are up to you we have to understand what they actually did with hendiata what was their if you want to know their potential you have to know what was their effects in hendiata and also after that the autopsy report gives us a distinct um a distinct analysis about how hela cells have actually worked in hendiata Hendiata's prognosis was very critical and emergent. No improvement was observed in her medical condition and no stagnation was either marked in the growth of her cancer. As days passed, her situation worsened as the cancer started to spread its fatal nature all across Hendiata. This was clearly scrutinized while Hendiata Lacks's autopsy or say post-mortem as it is widely used was conducted. Autopsy is a medical pro purpose or procedure conducted post death which we refer to as post mortem this procedure is not done in all times and not to all corpses while it is a procedure done to selective corpses with a significant cause behind death like death due to any unknown cause or disease the detailed analysis of hendiatus autopsy will give us a better insights of her health condition during death which will help us understand the hela cells better In fact the derivation of the name Hela is by extracting the first two letters of the first and the last names of Hendiata Lacks. Hendiata's health, uh, health condition kept deteriorating as her cancer started showing widespread effects throughout her body. Since the autopsy is a procedure conducted with a methodology we can better pace up with the autopsy if we go and analyze the following uh, by following the same methodology. The complete autopsy is widely classified into two stages which we which are namely external examination and internal examination. External examination involves examining the corpse externally for any clues or indications marking the possibility of a cause behind the death. The indications may include marks like um may include marks left after wound surgeries or hemorrhages. anything any any clue any indication on their body which can be observed externally is a part of the external examination internal examination internal examination includes a detailed analysis of the corpse it includes studying the organs of the body to make out the cause behind the death um 
This procedure is long and more significant. In fact, it is the heart and soul of autopsy. But there are different techniques of internal examination of the body. Methods are namely Rudolf Virtue method, uh, Baron von, uh, Bar, uh, von Karl Rokitansky method, Morris Letule method, and Anton Gohn method. Starting with the Rudolf Virtue method. The Rudolf Virtue method. This is a method developed by Rudolf Virtue, who is a great pioneer in the field of autopsy and is thus honored by the title of father of the modern pathology or father of cellular pathology. Considering his contributions in the field of cellular pathology by having contributed in the development of cell theory in 1839 along with Theodore Squan, so he is basically considered as the father of cellular pathology because he has the fame of having contributed in development of the cell theory in 1839 along with Theodore Swan. And cell theory is the base fundamental of the whole cellular pathology. Coming back to Rudolf Hirsch, he developed this method of autopsy in which each organ is removed and dissected independently. This method is largely used because we can better understand the independent and anatomical independent anatomical and physiological features of the organ but the drawback is that we cannot study the relationships between the organs next baron uh, baron von karl rokitansky method this method was developed by baron karl von rokitansky a bohemian physician and pathologist this method invo involves the in-situ dissection, which is at-place dissection, along with the block dissection. Next, Morris Letule method. This is the method of autopsy developed by Morris Letule, a French physician. The Letule method involves the en masse dissection, with a whole dissection, which is nothing but a whole dissection or mass dissection. Next, Anton Gohn method. The uh, Anton Gohn, the Gohn method is a method of autopsy developed by Anton Gohn. The Gohn method involves the end block dissection, which is blockwise dissection. This method is similar to the Rokitansky method. Different methods are used for different purposes. No sources provide information about what autopsy is conducted to Hindi attacks. Thus, for better explanation, Rokitansky method. Thus, for better explanation, Rokitansky method or Anton Gohn method is preferred to, uh, for explaining the Hendy, uh, uh, explaining the autopsy of Hendiata lacks. And will be used for. Uh, and these methods will be used further in this essay, essay to explain the autopsy of Hendiata lacks. Autopsy. Before going to uh, uh, the autopsy directly, we have to a uh, little understand the background of the medical condition of the patient. After diagnosis of her cervical cancer, Henrietta was receiving radiation treatment. She was receiving 4,800 mgh. Mgh is nothing but milligrams per, uh, per hour. Mg so, she was receiving a radiation treatment of 4,800 mgh, which is milligrams per hour of radiation. So, it's a radioactive material. It is uh, given to patients as a part of radiation treatment. So, Hendiata was receiving 4,800 milligrams per hour of radium. And also, she was receiving 11,500 raw antigenum of deep x-rays. So here rointhogenum is not an element or is not the name of the scientist. Rointhogen is basically the unit of measurement. So what is this unit of measurement? This is a unit of measurement of exposure of x-rays. So it, this unit basically defines uh, the expression of the exposure of x-rays to a body. So she was receiving 11,500 raw antigen of deep x-rays. But 
even after receiving such uh, a vigorous and vicious uh, cycle of radiation treatment nothing seemed to actually work out on hendiata and thus showing no improvement in her health condition about 6 months after her diagnosis with cervical cancer on august 8 1951 she had admitted into the johns hopkins hospital reporting severe abdominal pain and probably the most common uh, the, the actual reason for her abdominal pain was that she had hydronephrosis hydronephrosis is a condition which the flow of urine out of the urinary system is obstructed This condition is also termed as obstructed uh, obstructive uropathy. If the obstruction occurs in the papillae structures into which the papillae, sir, if the obstruction occurs in the papillae, in the calces, in the renal pelvis, and in the ureters, it is known as hydrourethronephrosis or simply hydronephrosis. Now, what are papillae? Papillary structures into which the nephrons drain urine. These structures form the renal pyramid, uh, pyramid of the in the medulla of the kidneys. Now, what are calces? Calces are structures into which papillary drain urine. What is renal pelvis? Renal pelvis is a structure into which, which is formed by, the cal uh, is formed when the calces join together. and that's how the renal pelvis is formed and the renal pel uh, the urine collected by calces is drained into the renal pelvis by the calces and ureter a very basic organ we all know ureter is basically a long narrow tube which connects the kidney to the urinary bladder and that's how it drains urine from the kidneys into the urinal bladder so if there is obstruction occurred by any cause in these parts of the urinary system or specifically of the kidneys we term it as hydronephrosis one of the effects of hydronephrosis is postrenal azotemia postrenal azotemia is a condition in which excess urine in the body causing the dilation causes the reabsorption of urea and other non protein nitrogenous compounds such as creatinine which increases the content of non protein nitrogenous substances in the serum which is not a good sign at all but that's exactly what happened with hendiata the content of non protein nitrogenous substances in serum had increased in a considerable level from 120 to 150 mgdl mgdl is nothing but milligrams per deciliter well the normal level of non protein nitrogenous uh, uh, substances um, in the serum should be 7 to 20 mgdl this reference range varies from age to age but this is a largely accepted reference range this the um, ureteral catheterization was performed to drain of the urine out of the body but it was unsuccessful too unfortunately hendiata lax died on october 4th 1951 at 12:15 am according to a few sources the pathologist who had conducted the autopsy for hendiata lax is ella h openheimer which is ella hutzler openheimer Let's study the autopsy of Hendiata Lax in the Rokitansky method. <laughs> the different organ blocks in the body which we dissect and inspect are listed below. Head and neck block which is also known as craniovertebral block or crane also known as craniocervical block. Cardiorespiratory block also known as cardiovascular block. celiac block also known as abdominal block and urogenital block let's study hendia uh, hendiata autopsy in in order of the above blocks head and neck block no state uh, no status about uh, no observations of the autopsy of the head and neck block are recorded because since the pathologists who were conducting uh, hendiata autopsy did not get permission from the family members to 
conduct the autopsy of the head and neck. So they did not conduct the autopsy of the head and neck. Next, cardiorespiratory block. The cardiorespiratory block, in the cardiorespiratory block, the organ on which we have to stress more is the lungs for the effects of cervical cancer on it being more prevalent and important. Bi bibacillar pneumonia was observed. Bibacillar pneumonia is a pneumonia in the lower lobes of the lungs. A purulent material was observed was on the bronchi of the mucus uh, bronchi and the mucus lining of the lungs was blood strained. Also, about one liter of yellowish fluid was reported to have filled the pleural cavity. What is pleural cavity? Pleural cavity is a cavity enclosed by the pleura. Pleura is nothing but a thin layer of loose fibrous connective tissue and mesothelium. So, pleural cavity is nothing but a cavity enclosed by the pleura. Now, what is mesothelium? Mesothelium is a membrane formed by squamous epithelium cells. The pleural cavity is a cavity which surrounds the lungs, thus providing a protection to the lungs similar to that of the pericardial cavity. This fluid buildup is termed as pleural effusion and pneumonia is believed to be a cause behind this condition. A similar fluid was also seen filling the peritoneal cavity, but it is to be further discussed in the celiac block. Nodal growth was also observed on the diaphragm, the lungs, the pleura, the pleura and the pericardium of the uh, 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 cardiorespiratory block. What is pericardium? Pericardium is a thin layer of tissue which surrounds and protects the heart heart it is filled with a shock it is filled with a shock absorbing fluid similar to the pleural uh, pleural fluid uh, and this fluid is known as the pericardial fluid the celiac block the celiac block does uh, also known as the abdominal block comprises all the organs enclosed by the peritoneum as mentioned before, the yellowish fluid which was, uh, which is reported to have filled the pleural cavity uh, is all, was also found in the peritoneal cavity. This condition is termed as ascites, which is probably because of the cervical cancer. The tumor nodules, the tumor nodules were found in the, pa uh, in the parenchyma of the liver. The parenchyma of the liver, see parenchyma of any organism, any tissue, tissue to be honest, is nothing but the main stroma of the tissue. So tumor nodule growth was found on the parenchyma of the liver, on the peritoneum, and these nodule growths were about 8 millimeters in diameter. <laughs> The tumor also infiltrated through the mesenteric lymph nodes. The mesenteric lymph nodes are lymph nodes of the mesentery. The mesentery in this reference is an organ or tissue of the peritoneum which is responsible for having the intestines in place. The infiltration of the mesenteric lymph nodes by the tumor is referred to as mesenteric lymphadenopathy. This is a condition of metastatic malignancy. Here, malignancy refers to fatal potent of a disease and metastasis is a specific term given to the rapid expansion of carcinomas around the body. Next block we are going to discuss is the urogenital block. This visceral block is definitely the most effective. In fact, the issue was with the visor of this block. We know that the adenal carcinoma of the cervix, which is termed a saccharomatized squamous cell carcinoma of the cervix, which had affected Hendy attacks, was caused by human papilloma virus whose mode of transmission was gestation or se uh, sexual intercourse. This tumor soon and very progressively propagated in the body, leading to metastasis. The effect of this carcinoma later was severe on the unus system. She had reported a severe case of hydronephrosis caused due to the blockage of uretus, calcis, and the renal pelvis by the tumor, as explained before. 
When the tumor blocking the la- left ureter was involved or obstructing the flow of urine near the brim of the renal pelvis or the place where the renal pelvis meets the ureter and drains urine. While the tumor mass which was involved with the right ureter was obstructing the flow of urine out of the ureter in, uh, into the urinary bladder. This tumor mass was particularly affecting the right ureter. The tumor mass which was particularly affecting the right ureter was near the posterior wall of the urinary bladder at the place where the ureter opens into the urinary bladder where the ureter forms an orifice. This obstruction causes the dilation and the end, uh, causes the dilation and entanglement of the right ureter. Hendiato also had large subcapsular hematoma at the superior pole. Hematoma is nothing but a bad bruise or simply is the accumulation of blood out of the vessels. And capsule which is referred here is the renal capsule which is a fibrous tissue of thick, uh, of thick fibers and uh, fibrous proteins such as collagen and elastin. So these fibrous proteins, collagen and elastin make this tissue compact and tight. Since the tissue encloses the kidneys and forms a renal cavity, it is known as renal capsule. The hematoma is certainly because of the tumor. The bladder was like a, a whole mass of tumor with the nodules of tumor infiltrating through its walls, especially in the trigon area. Trigon area is nothing but an area formed by the by both the offices of the respective, uh, respective ureters and the urethra as the vertices forming a triangular area. So, these tumor nodules were infiltrating through its walls, especially in the trigon area, and the bladder mucus also had nodules. Back there in the reproductive system, the tumor also penetrated through the vagina in the farther cervix. And the tumor also covered the uterus, fallopian tubes and the ovaries. The whole reproductive system was like a tumor, completely covered by tumor nodules. So if we see within six months, this was a rapid expansion of uh, HeLa cells. So, this really gives us a glimpse of the potential of the HeLa cells. Now, after the HeLa cells were extract- extracted, let's see what did they do so special, which about a medical revolution, which I am referring to as one. Potent of the HeLa cells. The special fe- uh, specialized feature of the HeLa cells is the ability... To, uh, uh, of being able to tap to almost all atmospheres. In fact, some HeLa cells were sent to space to study their effects, but they were intact. The accurate cause behind the potential of HeLa cells is still unknown, yet there is a hypothesis which previously, which is previous, previously explained in the EC. Um, but it is for sure that the first human cell line to be kept for as long as about one year in the roller tubes in vitro as a part of the initial research was only HeLa cells. As already surfaced before in this paper, the knowledge of cytology and cytogenetics was very scarce in the first half of the 20th century. But that was when exactly it got the boost it needed and the HeLa cells had a large part to play in it. The effects which the HeLa cells showed up uh, showed have urged the scientists to push the boundaries to a large extent, which had ultimately turned up to be beneficial. One such property of HeLa cells, which was, uh, which was rapid reproduction and invasion of other cell lines, leading to cell contamination. This contamination is intraspecific or interspecific, depending on what cell, uh, what cells or cell is being invaded and contaminated. This was alarming. Initially, the fact that HeLa cells were contaminating other human cell lines was unknown due to the lack of procedural knowledge for the identification until the man came into the scene, Stanley Michael Gartler. Stanley Michael Gartler, a molecular biologist, was in, uh, has invented a technique to identify the cell lines contaminated by HeLa cells. 
he will his he has previous records of having worked with a large number of tumors and having had research experience on clonality of tumors in females it was in the same research when he worked with the isoenzymes of glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase now what are isoenzymes isoenzymes like isotopes are enzymes with with different amino acid sequence but though the diff- the amino acid sequence is different their catalytic um uh, uh properties were the same like the reactions which they catalyzed were the same so such enzymes of a particular enzyme are known as isoenzymes this so the isoenzymes of uh, this enzyme glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase were used to detect the origins of the tumor cells using the technique of tracing the isoenzymes of glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase and the isoenzymes of variants of phosphoglucomaltase which will help us analyze the origin and the polymorphisms of the cells now what are polym- uh, polymorphisms uh, uh, polymorphisms are occurrence of two or more sta- more stages of transformation stages the variant or isoenzymes g6pd type a and pgm type 1 were the phenotypes which uh, which all the contaminated cell lines had indicating their contamination by hela cells but the fact that hela the cell contamination has occurred was not universally accepted and alternative probabilities were proposed one of which was hypothe- hypothesizing that the variant might have changed over multiple divisions thus it is not a reliable practice to determine the occurrence of cell contamination this was a questioning on the stability of the isoenzymes but later the stability of the isoenzymes was proved by gartner many more procedures were developed for the same which led to the development in many more fields of cytology and cytogenetics such as genome sequencing and genome mapping and also the chromosome counting so the chromosome counting i am referring to is uh, had you know is about the human diploid number which is 46 chromosomes in 23 pairs uh, out of which 22 pairs are autosomal pairs and one is a sex chromosome pair in this chromosomal count uh, or the diploid number was found accidentally and this credit is also to a, a considerable extent given to hela cells One of such procedures which was developed other than the isoenzyme analysis was triptych dige- uh, digestion of histone uh, proteins to expose uh, so this uh, was nothing but the triptych digestion of the histone proteins to expose and break the chromosomes of the respective cell lines suspected of contamination to Con, uh, to conduct gm sustaining and study the genome it is simply genome mapping or genome sequencing in this procedure the histone proteins the proteins which support the uh, chromosome structure is exposed to trypsin to break it, uh, trypsin is an enzyme which breaks proteins so it was the histone proteins are exposed to trypsin to break the trips uh, the histone proteins down and uh, expose the chromosome to stain it and study its genome this and this procedure is now referred to as genome sequencing or genome mapping the cell contamination by hela cells was so rapid that it almost contaminated all cell lines in the lab within a matter of days this led to an urge to trace and solve the issue thus leading to an development of critical of many critical pro- uh, procedures apart from this applications uh apart from these applications many clinic uh, clinical trials were also conducted on hela cells as there was no scarcity for them and in fact you would have a constant source of its clonal replicas any time this was exactly how jonas selk had developed the polio vaccine which soon eradicated poliomyelitis commonly known as polio we have uh we have to always remember henrietta lacks 
for having been the mother of the Gila cells and thus the mother of the modern medicine. A important key information. I said that the um, Stanley Michael Gartler had worked on chronality of uh, tumors in females. It was the same time when he worked with a very interesting phenomena which is known as the X in, uh, X in